Hi everyone, Nick Kratikos of Nick's Seasonal Decor, and today you're watching me on Bodabra, and what we're gonna be doing is creating a whole bunch of bows. So to start off with, what we have right here is a two and a half inch extra large polka dot ribbon. Uh, these come in all sorts of colors. I probably have 10 of the colors. Uh, there are so many different colors. So if you're trying to match it to something, they have it on all different sites online. So we're gonna be working with the lime green, the blue, and the pink today. And let me just pull up the comments so I'm able to follow along with you guys. Okay, so we're gonna start off with three of them. You could do as many as you would like. Uh, it's totally up to you and what you feel like doing. So let me just quickly find the comments, there we go. So we're gonna be dealing with these three colors. What we're gonna start off with is the wire. So this is Bodabra wire, it comes in a 100 yard spool. Uh, so it's gonna last a very long time. We're gonna cut off a length. I always recommend cutting off a longer length than you anticipate on needing, just in case you need to attach it to something longer or bigger. So we're gonna take our wire and on the top of our Bodabra, you can see that there's a little uh, opening. We're gonna take that wire and just simply place it right into that opening of our Bodabra, like that. Take our wires and place them underneath, just like this. Then we're gonna take one of our colors, and you can have these pre-cut, or you can do what we're doing today, uh, where we're just eyeballing it. We're gonna take a length about six to eight inches long, pinch it, and place it into our Bodabra. Notice, notice what I did is I completely reversed it, so 180 degrees, I twisted the ribbon, so that the non-printed side is um, facing up. That way, when we gather it, and I like to twist my Bodabra. When we gather it, the, printy, uh, the printed side is revealed, and then we can just place it inside like this. And then we're gonna cut it off. So as you guys come in, let me know where you're watching from. Uh, my older sister, Alex, as many of you guys know, is recording for me today, so be sure to say hi to her. Hello, everyone. And if you have any comments or questions during this video, I will be more than happy to answer them for you. So again, take your ribbon, pinch it, and place it inside. So the most important part when making bows like this is to try to make sure that the, uh, the loop size is the same. Tail size doesn't really make a huge difference, but it'll show if your loops are a little bit off. Not like it's a big deal, uh, but if you're trying to make a perfect, perfect bow, try to make uh, more focus on the loops rather than the tails. And then we can cut it off like that. So we're gonna come back in with our pink one now and just alternate. So you can do as many loops as you want. I typically recommend at least two of each color. Uh, but of course, if you only have a few pieces, as you can see, it's already pretty, working in just three colors, uh, one piece each. And this bow is probably the best for um, scrap pieces. So as you can see, we only have maybe a yard left of this, a yard and a half, two yards max. So if you have rolls where you only have a partial roll, this is the perfect bow for it. So we've got some people watching today. We have Edna, Patsy, Valerie from Middleborough. We Welcome, have Middleborough. Lehan from Mississippi. Hi, Ann. Welcome. So now we're going to repeat the process. We started off with our blue, so we'll just continue with that. Now we're going to begin adding our green. And then finally our pink. So as I said before, we can do as many layers as we would like, or we can call it quits here, which is where, what we're actually gonna do. I don't think we need any more than two pieces of each. Keep in mind, this is two and a half inch ribbon. Okay, so now we can just cut off our tail, our final tail, just like this. Notice I wasn't too concerned with the length of the tails. We can trim those up later on. Keep in mind, it's always better to have more ribbon than less. Uh, it's easier to take away than it is to add to the ribbon. Uh, so you might be kind of trashing a few pieces or cutting a little bit off, and that's totally fine, you guys. You're better off doing that when you start off than uh, not having enough ribbon. So now we're just gonna take our Bodabra wire, take one of the pieces, wrap it around the bow, and then secure it like that with a little knot. So here we have our bow, doesn't look good at all, but we're gonna be able to fix that. So to start off with, what I like to do is, is what, Alex? Ducktail. <laughs> Ducktail, there we go. Every time I say that I think of the theme song for Ducktails, I don't know if you remember <laughs> that. Um, 
but that's what I think of. So we're just gonna take our ribbon, fold them in half, and cut from the middle out towards the wired edge. And what happens when you do that is you get a nice dovetail, and it creates a professional looking end for your ribbons. And I highly suggest you do this. Uh, for this ribbon, a dovetail would look best, but for other ribbons, sometimes I do just a, an angled cut rather than kind of a blunt cut like this, so we can cut them at an angle. But for this, we are gonna want a dovetail just to make it look a little nicer, a little bit cleaner. So at this point, if you guys don't mind sharing this video, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I'm always very happy to do these videos for Bodabra. Uh, and just going forth, just as a reminder, I will be live the first Monday of every month. And that definitely changes from month to month. So I can't give you the exact days, but they are posted on the Bodabra page in case you're interested in seeing when we go live. So here we have our bow all, all dovetailed. Our next step is going to be fluffing. So we're gonna just pull our tails apart every which way. And always keep in mind that your bows look best once they're attached to their final uh, place. And then you're gonna come back and do a final fluff once it's secured to its final location. Open up your loops, fluff your bow to your liking. And there we have a very simple bow. Of course, it could use a little bit more fluffing, uh, but for time's sake, we're gonna hold off on this and we will have pictures of all the bows we create today, showing you guys exactly how they look without adding uh, them to anything. I like to show you guys how the bows look against my wall uh, without being in designs. I think it kind of creates a cool effect. So here's our first bow using basically leftover rolls of ribbon from wreath projects, swag projects, any other project. So we're gonna cut another length of our wire. First, let's move all of these tails out of the way. So we'll put those to the side. We'll cut another length of our wire. Take it, place it into our Bodabra, and place the wires underneath. So the next bow we're gonna create is going to be a ladybug bow. So here we have a two and a half inch gingham ribbon. This is a black and white gingham. And we also have a one and a half inch ladybug ribbon uh, that's gingham underneath, but ladybugs obviously have black and red. So we're gonna be working, we'll be just working those two in. And these are both wired ribbons. So whenever I use the Bodabra, uh, I like to use wired ribbon. Obviously at Christmas time when we're doing fresh wreaths, uh, I often will just use non-wired velvet and use the Bodabra and it works great. Uh, so you can definitely use both, but as a designer for wreaths and stuff, I always recommend you use wired ribbon. So I just cut a length. It uh, doesn't really make a huge difference. We're just gonna be using these as tails. Uh, these ones are about 20 inches long, so in total about a 40 inch piece of ribbon. And then we're gonna cut another length of our ribbon. We're gonna cut the ladybug one now. Isn't this one just really cute? Yeah, I love I it. I really like this one. So me and Tanya actually have a roll of this saved. She wants to do a ladybug wreath really bad. Uh, so we're gonna hold off on making a wreath with this ribbon until Tanya's around. So I placed both of our tails. Our next step is going to be placing the two and a half inch ribbon. For those of you that have been watching me for a while, you know my favorite type of ribbon to work with is one and a half inch. This is my go-to size for ribbon. Um, I just like the way it looks against my designs, but we're gonna be working in this because I think the colors look really nice together. So for this one, we're gonna create some rather large loops, about four and a half to five inches on either side. Also, Bodabra today is giving away a roll of scrunchy ribbon. So if you would like to win a free roll of ribbon, comment down below. You must stay for the entire time, or at least for the ending, uh, when your name is called to win the free roll of ribbon. And as always, who doesn't want a free roll of ribbon? <laughs> So we were able to get four. We can create a smaller one if we wanted to. Uh, I'm just gonna cut that off and just keep the four tails or four loops like this and we can spread them apart afterwards. But now we're gonna come back in with the ladybug. So we created four loops, two on either side with a two and a half inch black gingham and we uh, created those about five and a half to six inches wide. For the ladybug ribbon, we're gonna do a slightly smaller loop. These ones are only gonna be about either four and a half to five inches. Uh, so slightly smaller than the original one. And we'll do five at least. Maybe we'll do three on either side. You know what? We'll do three on either side and then one in the middle. And the one in the middle is gonna be slightly smaller. 
So I placed two on either side now. Now we'll come back in with two more on either side to finish off the sides and then come back in a smaller one. So here's our final one. And now we're gonna create the small one in the middle. This one's only gonna be about three and a half inches. Doesn't need to be long. Just enough to create kind of essentially a little button in the middle. So now we'll put it in our bodabra. The bodabra does come with a wand to compress your ribbon. I've always just done it by hand. Uh, and that's the cool thing about bow making is that you're gonna have to develop your own way. So these videos are more along the lines of uh, a guideline, but of course everybody's gonna be using their device differently and you're just gonna have to practice with your own device to get something to your liking. So now we can pull out our bow, take one of the wires, wrap it around and from the back, twist it. So how's everybody's night? Well, it's night for us, but not sure where you guys are watching from. So let us know and let us know what time it is because it is, what time is it? Seven, maybe 7.15? 7.15 around there, that's around. what I was thinking. So now we're just fluffing open our bow and here's a little bow uh, or little, little loop in the middle. So we can just compress that to kind of finish off our bow so you don't see any of the wires. Open up the two loops on the side. This is probably gonna be my favorite bow of the night. I really like this ladybug ribbon. Pull our tails down. And if you guys hear crinkling, it's because we have <laughs> so many plastic bags full of supplies around us. Uh, I kind of go a little crazy shopping sometimes, as you guys know. Uh, so that's what you hear when you hear kind of like a crinkling sound. There's plastic <laughs> bags underneath our feet, underneath the table, everywhere. Well, Give some hearts if you guys love that. I think that's really pretty. So pretty. That's probably my favorite bow we've made. If I do say so myself. <laughs> so here's... Um, a two and a half inch ribbon, one and a half inch ribbon. We created four loops of the larger one simply because we only had enough to create four loops. And then we created three loops on either side of the ladybug, one and a half inch, and a small three and a half inch loop in the middle with some tails. I love this. Give some arts if you do. Let us know. Let's create another bow. We're gonna create a patriotic bow because lately I've been on a patriotic kick and I love the colors together. So that's what we're gonna be making. Again, cut a length of wire. We have Tracy from Ohio watching, Jatan from Texas, Philip from Kentucky. Welcome. Sherry from Canada. Sherry Hi. Sherry from Canada. Awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Okay. So here are three ribbons. I offered these for sale last year and they sold in one day. So hopefully we're going to be able to bring some more of these back. Uh, I love the quality of them. As I said in other videos, sometimes the gingham, if you purchase it in uh, larger amounts, it's not good quality. That is not the case for this. This is a 50 yard spool and it's great quality ribbon. So we have the gingham. We also have this canvas chevron. You probably have no idea what I'm talking about when I say like the names of <laughs> the types of ribbon. Uh, so we have this one and a half inch and then another two and a half inch, uh, one and a half inch, kind of a royal blue. So let's create a bow. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take our ribbon, drop it to the floor to make it a little bit easier for us. grab some of the ribbon. And what we can do is we can create a tail if we want. We don't have to create a tail, but we're gonna do it anyway. So I'm just gonna take the three ribbons, kind of see how long I want our tails to be. I kind of want this bow to be a decent size. Uh, so I'm just gonna cut them off. This is definitely gonna be a very long tail, which is fine for me. Then we can just kind of eyeball it. Doesn't really make a huge difference if it's exact. Remember that you guys, doesn't make a huge difference if it's perfect. Take our three ribbons, line them up. I'm just gonna place the uh, one and a half inch chevron on top because it's the thickest. Take all three of them, place them upside down in my bodabra, and then create loops. As I said before, I like to twist my bodabra. You don't have to, you can twist your hands instead of moving the bodabra. Uh, I'm a lazy designer and I find it easiest just uh, twisting my bodabra round and round as we create our bows. But of course, like right now, if we wanted to just create a loop, we could just create a loop. But I find it a little bit easier twisting it round and round. So now we're dealing with three. Last week we did, I think, two ribbons. And people would like to see the three ribbon. So today we're doing a three ribbon with the chevron. 
Uh, same process, nothing different about creating a three ribbon bow or four ribbon bow or five ribbon bow. The only thing you guys should keep in mind is that the more ribbon you use, the more loops you're gonna have. So since we have two loops on either side at this point, we actually have six. We have, yeah, six on either side. No, yes, yes, six on either <laughs> side, you guys. So if you're trying to create a bow that you can add things to or add a accents into, because like I said before, I don't really like to have all of my bows to be super full and gigantic. More often than not, I prefer my bows to be a little bit less and incorporate florals and greenery into them. Um, so keep that in mind if you're working in multiple ribbons because your bow is going to be uh, larger, faster. So I'm thinking three loops on either side should do the trick with this bow. And we have three on either side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut it off. And we always want to make sure, if I can see, there we go. We always want to make sure we have a little bit of coverage or a little excess piece of ribbon. Uh, the reason for that is in case your uh, wire becomes loose or your pipe cleaner becomes loose, or if you didn't tighten your bow enough, you still have a little bit of leeway before your bow completely comes apart. It's not going to save it for long, but at least it'll save it hopefully until you notice. Okay, now we can pull it really, really tight, take one of the wires, wrap it in front, pull it to the back side, and then create our little, our little knot from behind. And I also make sure to knot it a couple times. That way our bow doesn't come loose at all. And then what we can do is separate the loops. So I'm just pulling them apart. And sometimes I like my ribbons, if this was two different uh, sizes, sometimes I actually just leave the ribbon on top of each other like this. Sometimes it creates a cool effect. Of course, the choice is ultimately up to you. In this case, you definitely would want to remove or separate the loops because uh, the ribbons are all the same width and you wouldn't be able to see all three ribbons. So we'll just continue opening up our loops, pulling them apart. And we have one left. So now we can fluff, we can pull our tails down first of all, and we can cut those and dovetail them and curl them later on if we decide to do that. There's so many different ways to create bows, so many different ways to add bows into your designs. Uh, what you see here is not the only type of way to make bows. Using the Bodabra, there's so many different ways. And if somebody tells you this is a specific way to make a bow, they're wrong. Uh, if it looks good and you've uh, created a beautiful bow. It doesn't really matter how you got there as long as the outcome is good. So just keep that in mind. So we'll just fluff it, fluff it, open up our loops, get any of the kinks out. And here we have a festive patriotic, re you guys hear the plastic <laughs> bags now, uh, a festive patriotic bow that you could add to a lantern, a lamppost outside, a mailbox, a fireplace, a mantle. Um, above the fireplace, you could even add this on your fireplace if you don't use it like us your staircase, a wreath, and I think I listed everything. A teardrop swag everywhere. So that's our third bow. How are we doing on time? About 10 minutes. 10 minutes. All right, so let's create, wow, we're working fast today. Creating some of my favorite bows too. So now we'll create one using a four inch ribbon, which I don't think we've done before. This is another gingham because we've just seemed to really like gingham lately. Uh-oh, got <laughs> tape stuck to me. So then we'll also come back in with a two and a half inch. And more often than not, you'll see me matching my prints. Uh, and if I work in another color, I often will just use a solid. So here we just have a very thick solid one and a half inch ribbon. Um, so more than off, more often I'll just, I like to stick to a few patterns. It typically looks best in my opinion than having, you know, six, seven different prints. Of course, if that's the style you like, by all means, you could add more and more ribbons. So I'll cut some tails off using the four inch ribbon. You could even use this as a tablecloth for a very that small is table. thick ribbon. Yeah, that is a, <laughs> a lot of ribbon. So we'll place that into our bodabra. We'll cut another length of the two and a half inch. And we'll kind of do what I think people call a three to one bow in this. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to do all three loops for 
um, the red ribbon because it's such a thick ribbon, but we'll see. Maybe we'll just do two. Two, two, one bow. How's that sound? <laughs> so we're going to take our four inch ribbon, which is basically the size of the Bodabra. It's so big. And create our loops. No different. The only thing is, is that the ribbon's wider. It'll still do the same exact thing. We'll place one there, drop our ribbon to the floor. I'm actually thinking we might not even need the blue. I think these two colors look really nice together. Mm -hmm. You think so too? I think these yeah. look nice. So, you know what? We will probably do three loops on either side. So if you're ever able to find, you know, one type of ribbon, at stores, I recommend picking it up if it's on sale or if it's something that you really want, but just have no clue where to use it. Because this ribbon's been sitting in my shop for two years now, and I haven't used it, and today we're using it, so. Oh, someone just mentioned you forgot the wire. Oh, I did forget the wire. That's fine. That's fine. Typically, if we're going to be honest, off camera, I actually don't add the wire first, um, which is probably why I forgot it. Because I'm so used to creating them so fast and then essentially squeezing it in my hand and taking it out. So for the third loop, what we're actually doing is something a little bit smaller. Maybe we'll have this in the middle. We're just trying something new. But since this ribbon's so thick, you can essentially just plop it out like that and it would be fine. But thanks for noticing that because I wouldn't have until later on. So now let's create some loops using the two and a half inch. So as you can see, we're progressively getting smaller and smaller as we're adding loops. Now we'll come back in with another one. And for this one, we'll probably just do two on either side and then one loop in the middle. So here's our final loop. So for this one, it's going to be, like I said, a little bit smaller. And now this is where it becomes important. What you're going to want to do is cut your wire first before you pull it out of the Bodabra, or else you're going to run into issues of cutting it while holding your bow. So here we have our wire. We'll just pull the bow out like that. If you can hold it, that's totally fine. As you can see, it doesn't make a difference. Feeder wire through, place it in the little slip knot, pull really tight, take one of our wires, wrap it around, and then we can secure it from behind. Okay. Now what we can do is rustle some plastic bags. <laughs> but now what we can do is fluff open our bow. As I said before, we created three loops on either side, but what we actually did is created a smaller four inch loop. So we could do something like that. Isn't that kind of pretty to, mm -hmm. uh, layered like that? So again, separate our two loops on the sides, fluff everything open. We have our winner tonight. Awesome. Our winner is Brenda Watkin. Congratulations. Congratulations, Brenda. And again, thank you guys for sharing. And if you haven't shared yet and uh, don't mind sharing, I greatly appreciate it. It helps us reach and inspire more people. And hopefully more people will uh, become more comfortable with bow making. I know a lot of people struggle with it. And that's the whole point of these bows, uh, these uh, videos is to help inspire you guys and show you guys that if I can do it, anybody can do it. And if Alex can do it, which she has, then really <laughs> anybody can do it. Okay. I love this one. Isn't this one pretty? Mm -hmm. So originally I was planning on adding the blue ribbon, making it kind of red, white, and blue, or at least just summery. And as you can see, we changed our mind and it worked. So two things that we changed, we didn't add a third ribbon like we talked about. We also created a smaller ribbon of the two and a half inch. And once we hold this up and put it on our wall and fluff it, it'll look even better. But give some hearts if you guys like this one. Now I think this one would work for the entire spring and summer season. I think, yeah, I think it's pretty. So here is another bow. So, so far we've made four bows. How are we doing on time? We have, I believe, oh, I could see. just look at here. We got five minutes. Let's do five another minutes. quick bow. 
And first and foremost, let's put some wire into our Bodabra. But as you guys can see, um, if things don't go right or if you do something wrong or if you forget a step, there's always ways to correct it. Uh, nothing's set in stone. And if this is your first time making a bow, I highly suggest not cutting into your ribbon or at least just purchasing an expensive ribbon, which all of these really were. None of these cost more than 4 or $5 a roll. Uh, but purchase an expensive ribbon and practice with it. Practice makes perfect, even though none of us are perfect. Now let's just do a traditional summery wreath, a uh, summer uh, wreath bow with not so many loops for this one. I think we're gonna do a little bit less when it comes to loops, just so that we can place it into a design later on and work in some florals and some greenery. So we placed a piece of ribbon about 24 inches on either side for tails. Now we'll place our ribbon in and create some loops. So I'm just creating loops actually a little bit longer than what we typically do. These are about five and a half, uh, about six inches long for these loops. And another tip, if you are precise, like I was in the beginning before I kind of gave up on trying to be precise, is you can actually take your ribbon place it into your bodabra and either stretch it out so that it becomes the same length or if it's too long you can pull it back in that's if you want to be exact uh, as you guys can see typically i'm not i usually just eyeball it and if it looks good to the eye it'll look good when it's finished or at least we'd like to think so <laughs> but let's do a few more loops since this is such a large bow we'll probably do either four or five on either side just to kind of create a little bit more of an airier bow so we have three on this side, let's do four. And then we'll do five on this. So we'll Betty, do five and five. Betty would like to know if you're twisting in the middle to have the right side facing up. That's that's exactly right. Not only does it make uh, the right side up, so again, I'm twisting it 180 degrees so that the side we don't, this is the perfect ribbon to show you guys, the side we don't want showing is on top, but then as you can see when we gather it together, uh, the polka dot or whatever the print is, is showing. So not only does it bring the printed side towards the surface and show it, uh, but I feel as though it kind of creates some strength within your bow by having the ribbon twisted like that, uh, some integrity down below. And then when we compress it, it just holds its shape a little bit better. That's what I have found from making bows. And whether it's a printed ribbon or just a solid ribbon, even something like this, well, this is shows on either side but something like this that we worked with before i even made sure to twist that even though it's the same on either side by twisting it in the middle it just creates a stronger bow so now we finished adding all of our loops we've added five to either side we're gonna pull our wire take one side wrap it around the front pull it again and create several knots And I like to do three most of the time. Then we have our bow. And as I said before, you could create the most beautiful bow and have everything right and follow all of the steps. And if you don't fluff it, this is what you're going to end up with. So the most important part of bow making, in my opinion, is making sure to pull the loops apart and fluff it. So a bow like this is the perfect bow to work in some florals and some greenery. It holds its shape. Uh, you have lots of room to place things in. And then when, when we start creating more congested bows, like the patriotic one we created a little while ago, uh, it's, it leaves less room for designing with when you place it on a wreath, which is fine. Sometimes we want a, a standout bow, but sometimes we like bows to be able to have greenery and florals. So we pull our tails down. And there we go, a very simple, loose and airy bow. So give some hearts if you guys like this. We created this bow, a traditional bow. Let's do a quick rundown. A summer bow, spring or summer bow, or picnic bow, or whatever you want to call it. Right here, using four inch ribbon, one and a half, uh, two and a half inch ribbon, we created my favorite bow of the night, which is the ladybug bow, which hopefully you guys like it too. I think these look really nice. We also created Another traditional bow with three ribbons for uh, the 4th of July or just patriotic bows in general. And then lastly, our funky bow, which is the perfect bow for using scrap ribbons, especially if you only have a yard or two of ribbon 
Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's always a pleasure being on Bodaba. And I'll see you all the first Monday of next month. So I want to thank Sandy for having me on Bodaba today. Hopefully you guys learned something new. And hopefully I made it a little easier for you. And I'll see you all soon. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.